Sensitive. They prefer an environment of quiet reverence. Huh. Bold? You might have heard that our library has a collection other shops would lack the skill to curate. Between us, even Master Larokan was reluctant to house them in his tower. Mightier than the magic wand, apparently. <laughs> They're locked away here for their and our customers' safety. Our finest reserve includes the Sarkian Codex, the Annals of Carsis and Netherese Folly, Sites of the Sealy, and the Curriculum of Strategy. Do any of those interest you? to be written by Lord Carsis himself, the Netherese Arcanist who attempted to replace the goddess Mistra, failed and was banished for the attempt. Great magical knowledge lies within those pages, but not many can withstand it. That's it. That's what I need. The annals of Carsus would no doubt have much to say about the crown's true nature. If only you could read them. Bye. Books as temperamental as these are not on sale. They are secured in our vault, where none can harm them, nor can they do any harm. Consider yourself lucky to have learned of such a book's existence, and then forget about it. The annals of Carsus are best left unread. Psst. I already told you. It is locked in our vault. And with good reason. Imagine if a tome so dangerous was sold to someone with such poor comprehension. Knowledge of these tones is enough to stimulate most. We've more smoke and say Jaramie and his mother. Perhaps we ought to ask what they have in the back, if anything. No, I don't think it'd hurt. We'll probably have the nest tomorrow.
Whatever comes, I'm ready. Time to rest. Can't keep me out. in a restricted area. A swift exit may be in order. You've wandered into a forbidden area, but you sense it might be time to leave. You've wandered into a forbidden area. You sense it might be time to leave.
You've wandered into a forbidden area. You sense it might be time to leave. Congratulations, you've convinced them to give you access. Now what? You've been caught trespassing. Again. You don't have permission to be here. You're about to be ejected. What's cooking? shopping to do.
Whatever it takes. You don't have permission to be here. You're about to be ejected. to be here. You're about to be ejected. You've been caught trespassing again. No entry to vaults. Trespassers will be disintegrated. Master Laroican. something awfully valuable.
Some valuable knowledge hidden between these pages. You don't have permission to be here. You're about to be ejected. The Annals of Carsus. The preamble to a civilization's downfall, committed to parchment by the very hand that wrought its destruction. If the crown atop the Elder Brain was truly forged by Carsus himself, this book will confirm it. All we have to do is turn the page. That devil Raphael was telling the truth. There's no doubt. The crown of Carsus is what's controlling the Elder Brain. And this, this is no mere journal. It contains Carsus' original plans for the crown's construction. His designs for godhood. Not exactly. It was what he did with it that sealed his fate. And, for a time, that of magic itself. The crown was merely the means. The book states that the crown and netherstones were originally one construct, seemingly sundered at the moment of Carsus's downfall. If we can collect the crown setting and the three netherstones, and with the correct invocation of certain spells and gestures detailed in these notes, I think I could reforge it. To every end you can imagine, and a thousand more beyond. Just think of it. The power of the gods in mortal hands at last would be free of doctrine and dogma, confined only by the limits of our imaginations. I promise you, the gods will never grant us such a blessing, no matter how much we worship and adore them. Some gods may delude themselves into believing they care about their worshippers, but when it comes down to it, we're all expendable. Children to be appeased, not respected, 
I worshipped Mistra loyally for years, and in that time she granted me the barest sliver of the power I was ready to wield. Even with the fate of the world at stake, she had little more to offer me than the means of blowing myself up at a more convenient time. She's done nothing to help us. Mistra wanted the brain obliterated because of this crown. She fears a world in which such power is beyond her control, ready to be claimed by Karsus's successor. Not until this moment. I can't help beginning to see such a destiny unfold before me. Powerful as he was, Carsters lack some advantages I can lay claim to. I know Mistra. Intimately. And I carry a fragment of the weave itself within my body. Carsters achieved many things. Hmm. But he never managed that. Long road lies ahead before the crown comes into our possession. All I ask for now is that you do not dismiss this possibility out of hand. Please, at least think on it. I see. I suppose I am asking you to take a leap of faith. Even the most loyal of companions might struggle to land gracefully. It's been so long feeling... inferior. Shut out from my destiny over such a simple act of youthful enthusiasm. Perhaps I got carried away with the thought this crown could give me back what Mistra took. Cure me. Even. There aren't many wizards who'd care to be mentioned in the same breath as him, or his folly. Whatever comes of this, we cannot allow the crown to be reforged in Raphael's image. A devil wielding the might of Cassus. It would be the end of everything. to know a good deal about our condition, Gabe. Elminster? Oh, hello, my boy. No, don't mind me. I'm uh, just enjoying a lungful of bull durian air. <laughs> yeah, there's a distinctive aroma, though perhaps not one worthy of bottling. Tell me, what curiosities have you and your uh, companions discovered within the walls of this esteemed emporium? I trusted he would be sensible enough to exercise caution in this matter and to seek the truth. By now, you are aware of the evil we have aroused. Cassos has pestilent crown, the very tool with which its eponymous creator unmade an empire and magic itself. Perhaps now you understand what is at stake here, my boy. Though what Mr. asked of you was extreme, it was not without merit, nor demanded lightly. What are you saying? Or rather, what are you not saying? Mister knows you defied her, Gabe. Well, of course she knows. She's Mistra. She bids you come to her holy shrine in the Stormshore Tabernacle. There, she will grant you an audience at last. I'm curious enough to make the attempt. All right. An audience with the mother of magic 
It is. Perhaps... Perhaps that should have been your mission right from the start. Trust in yourself. Trust in the weave. If you are with me, trust in Mr. There is a conclusion yet to be written in this sorry tale, Gale of Waterdeep. And yours is the quill that will write it. So all it took to get Mistra's attention was to learn how to reforge an artifact that once destroyed her. It's obvious when you stop to think about it. Well, I doubt it's an apology for asking me to die on her behalf. Whatever it is. If it's important enough to send Elminster, we can be damn sure she's serious. This is a conversation that's long overdue on both sides. I owe it to her to hear her out. Come what may afterwards. After you. The mother of all magic, they say. Let us hope Mistra brings Gale good fortunes. Yes, the hammer is ours. The means to Orpheus' release is in our hands. To the Undercity, Vos must hear of our victory. When we next enter the Astral Prism, we will break Orpheus free. since I stood before her in a place like this. There she stands, just as Elminster promised. Mistra, goddess of the weave, mother of all magic. The old man wasn't lying. She's opened the summoning channel. Can't you feel it? Gail's right. The very air around the statue crackles with magic. It sets your teeth on edge. A stream of pure, undiluted weave. I only have to reach out, and it will carry me to Mistra, wherever she may be. Go on then, Gale. We'll be here waiting for you when you're finished. Time was I'd have given my right arm for a chance to speak with Mistra again. <laughs> the left one, too. Maybe a knee. Am I? You're right. I am a strong, capable wizard. And this is no more than a casual reunion with an ex-lover. My omnipotent, omniscient ex-lover. I always wonder what being nervous would feel like. I hate it.
During my time locked away in Waterdeep, I prepared a quite comprehensive speech for her on the subject of our former relationship and the manner in which it ended. Alas, recent events have rendered the majority of it moot, so I'm gonna have to improvise. Unless you have any words of wisdom to impart before I go. Heartfelt apology is the surest way to a goddess's heart and her favor. I pray that she'll be in a forgiving mood. If she weren't the one I'd be praying to. I'll only be gone for a matter of moments. The outer planes experience time quite differently to our own. Wait for me. Please. Waterdeep. You look well. Mistra. I never thought we'd speak again like this. Why am I here? There is much unsaid between us. But time runs ever short. You discovered what lies at the heart of the Absolute. The Crown of Causes. And you disobeyed my instruction. Why? I didn't want to die. And when I saw the crown, I thought I might not have to, if I only understood its power. And you believe you have the right to such an understanding? The past cannot be undone with self-pity, nor can a future be forged. Only with the truth will you see the way ahead. The fragment of magic you tried to return to me was not of my creation. It was the Carsite Weave. It is a corrupted, half-born magic, wrought in the brief moment Carsus ascended to godhood. It hungers for power, just as he did, and it can never be sated. You unleashed something that would consume all magic in existence, and yet you thought only of preserving yourself. That can't be. It wasn't. It couldn't have been. I only wished to prove myself worthy. I had no idea. You were already worthy. What you lacked was patience. And it cost you dearly. When the Carsite Weave entered your body, your gifts were the first thing it consumed. The only reason the orb sleeps is because I have allowed it to feed on the true weave. A temporary measure, but one that will not be enough to save us. With each day that passes, the Elder Brain threatens to become a new kind of god. Its worshippers, a scourge of soulless illithids. If you will not use the orb to end this abomination, then you must find a way to separate crown and host. When you've done this, you must surrender the crown of Carsis to me. I won't let you down again. When the Absolute is vanquished, I will surrender Carsis's powers to you. You have my word. Thank you. May the Weave's light guide your purpose, and its wisdom guide your hand. The future of magic rests on your shoulders. Gale of Waterdeep, I promise you, it is a burden you are strong enough to bear.
Back on mortal soil once more. I can't believe I saw her. After all this time. Relieved. Drained. Proud of myself for summoning the courage to go to her in the first place. And, if I'm being totally honest, a bit lightheaded. As if it wasn't enough to have seen her again. She didn't exactly summon me there for small talk. The car sight weave within me this whole time. I knew the orb was no ordinary ball of magic before it to be Carsus's malignant creation. Gods! How did I not see that? But I should have known. What right had I to go about declaring myself an archmage when I was as foolish as a common apprentice in setting such an entity loose? At least now I'm armed with the truth and Mistress' expectations. Once I bring the crown of castes to her, I can put everything right. The orb, too. I'll be myself again, for all that's worth. Thank you. There aren't many I'd trust to stand beside me on such a journey. Fewer still who would do so because they believed I deserved such a chance. If I could promise you one thing in return for your faith in me, it's this. I will use everything in my power to ensure we defeat this evil. I will not let you down. Now, I believe we have a date with an elder brain to get to. Shall we? Now, the watch is a history.